I'm sitting at a wobbly little table across from my wife. We're surrounded by hundreds of people. I'm in the New Arican Poets Cafe in downtown Manhattan. I met my very first moth story slam of my life. Competitive storytelling, true stories told live on stage without notes. In the words of one moth host, it is the epicenter of competitive narcissism in America. And I am here to tell a story. I do not want to be here to tell a story. I have been forced to come to this place by my friends. The Moth has put out a podcast, and for the last couple of years, they've been listening to it, and they've become convinced that I should be a person telling stories. Not because I can tell stories, but because they tell me I have had the worst life of anyone they know, which is not a nice thing to say about your friend. And I've been a teacher for 23 years, so I know that is not true because I have met kids who have had struggles far greater than mine. But I have had one of those strange lives. Twice in my life, I have stopped breathing, my heart has stopped beating, and paramedics have saved my life with CPR. I was arrested and tried for a crime I didn't commit. I have been in jail for a period of time, and I've been homeless in my life. I've been the victim of a horrific robbery. I've had one of those strange lives, and truly that is the tip of the iceberg of nonsense that I have dealt with. And so when my friend said, go to the moth and tell a story, I said, great, without any intention of actually following through. But they continued to pester, and that is why I am here tonight in the New Arican's Poets Cafe, surrounded by excited people and I am not one of them. I am here to tell you why I want you to do the same thing I did that night. This is a photo taken by Dan Kennedy, the host that night. He was standing on stage and he took a picture of the audience. Can you see me in the audience amongst all the shocked and happy and surprised people? Can you see me? I'm right there. Can you see me? I am not happy to be there in any way. I am the only person literally in the photo who is not cheering because I'm upset about it. Now, there's a chance for me not to tell a story that night because the way a moth story slam works is you put your name in a hat and they take out 10 names over the course of the evening. 10 people get to tell stories. There's 25 names in the hat that night, which mean, means my chances are less than 50-50 that I'm going to have to get on stage. And we've gotten through nine storytellers. I've only got to survive one more name out of that hat when I hear Dan Kennedy call my name. And I don't move at first because it occurs to me nobody knows me here. If I just sit quietly and still, eventually they will give up on me and find someone else. But my terrible wife kicks me underneath the table and says, that is your name. And I say, yes, I know what my name is. I don't want to tell a story. And she said, you need to get on the stage and tell a story. Truly, it's the last thing I want to do. I do not want to stand on a stage in front of 300 disaffected New York hipsters with man buns and side eye who are going to actually judge me numerically when I am done. But my wife makes me do it. And I hate every single moment of that evening until I'm standing in front of a microphone and I'm speaking to the audience. The first words out of my mouth, I suddenly understand that I am in a place that I want to be and I want to return to many, many times. And so that is my first night telling a story. I win because I am the jerk who likes to win. And what happens after that is sort of miraculous. That was 10 years ago last week. And in that time, I have gone on to become a storyteller who performs all over the country and all over the world on stages in front of tens and hundreds and sometimes thousands of people. I tell stories everywhere. And then this crazy thing happens. People start asking me to tell them how to tell stories. And I go to work for companies like the ones on the screen right now, companies like Slack and Johnson & Johnson and Lego, asking a dumb storyteller like me, a guy who just stands on a stage and talks about his life, suddenly I'm teaching them how to market their products and I'm working with their sales teams. I'm working with advertising companies on car commercials. I'm working at Yale teaching professors how to tell stories. But more importantly, I'm working with people like you. Maybe you're on this list. A couple years ago, I worked with Santa Clauses. Santa Clauses who understood that if they could tell a story to a kid on their lap at the mall to make that kid smile faster, they could get that kid off their ass and get another kid on and get more kids through the line in the course of an hour, and it works. But I've worked with people who are looking for love, 
People who can get that first date, which means you essentially pass the hygiene test and maybe you have a job and you look okay, but you can't get the second date, which always means something came out of your mouth that caused the person across from you to never want to see you again. And oftentimes it's you're just telling the wrong stories or you're telling those stories poorly. There's always people in my workshop who don't understand why they're there. I say, why are you here? They say, I don't know. My wife made me come. And I say, I know why you're here. She can't stand you anymore. We want to fix you. I work with the clergy, priests and ministers and rabbis, who I convince, stop talking about that old book that nobody cares about and tell something about yourself. Get people to believe in you, and then they will finally listen to you. All of those people have come to me over the years and learned that storytelling is an essential and important and a critical part of a person's life. And I want to add your name to this screen by the end of my talk. I've got five reasons why I want you telling stories. All five will apply to you, I promise. The first is you're going to improve your communication. Storytelling is remarkable because when you tell a story, people actually remember what you said. You've been shown one million bar graphs over the course of your life. How many bar graphs do you remember right now? When was the last time you said, you know what, that PowerPoint deck? Show that one to me again, it was so great. When was the last time you said, could I take that pie graph home? I really wanna show my friends this amazing pie graph. We don't remember data, we don't remember nonfiction, we remember stories. I suspect that all of you have at least one movie, but probably 20, that you have watched 20 times. You probably know all the dialogue all the way through the movie and nothing would ever surprise you if you were to watch it again. But tonight, if you turn on the TV and that movie comes on, you're gonna keep watching it. That is the power of story. Story gets into our hearts and our minds and it makes people remember what we have to say. Storytelling can also create amazing connections with people. I stand on stages all the time, tell vulnerable stories about my life. I step off the stage and people tell me their deepest, darkest secrets. Just prior to the pandemic, I told a story about a parenting failure in New York. I stepped off the stage, a woman came up to me, she grabbed me, people touch me all the time because as soon as I tell a story, they feel like they know me even though I don't yet know their name. She grabbed me without introducing herself to me, she pulled me close and she said, every time I go into someone's house, even my own mother's house, I have to steal something. And then she pulled me in really close and she whisper yelled at me. She said, I've never told anyone that before. Imagine that's a 40 year old woman with mental illness. For her entire life, she has suffered with this. She saw a stranger on a stage share a moment of vulnerability and she said, that is the guy who I'm going to talk about my mental illness to. And it happens to me all the time, five times in my life in three different states. I have stepped off a stage and a woman has come to me and told me about her miscarriage. And in all five cases, I was the only one who she ever spoke about her miscarriage to. The first time it happened, I ran to my car, I called my wife, I said, you're not gonna believe what just happened. And she said, I believe it. My wife had a miscarriage. She said, when you have a miscarriage, even though you know it's not your fault, you can't help but wonder if you did something. So there's guilt and there's shame. She said, also times when you have a miscarriage, you haven't even told anyone you're pregnant yet. So the conversation of, I was pregnant, but now I'm not pregnant, is really challenging. She said, you stood on a stage, you shared something most people don't share, a story of vulnerability, and then she wanted to talk to you. I was in Attleboro, Massachusetts, three years ago, speaking to high school students. When I finished, I was sort of talking to one of the teachers, and a boy came up to me, 16-year-old boy, he whispered in my ear. He said, every time I'm in the bathroom, I have to pee in the corner, I can't pee in a toilet, and then he ran up the aisle. Now, as an elementary school teacher, I'll tell you, that's actually a thing. It doesn't usually make it all the way to high school, but for that boy, it did. That boy had been peeing in corners of restrooms all his life, and for some reason, he decided that strange man on the stage is the one I'm gonna tell. And thankfully, I was able to identify him and get him some help. You can't believe the number of secrets I am told on a daily basis because the connections that we make when we tell stories are extraordinary. You can also coerce people benevolently. The reason I started with a story is because I wanted you to like me. I wanted you to feel connected with me, so when I start to tell you to tell stories, you feel like you already know me. Politicians use stories. We heard that today. We heard a story in Home Depot that made me think, I love that guy. <laughs> when you tell a story, you earn someone's trust, 
They like you, and then they want to follow you. They want to believe you. They want to trust you. It is my success in elementary school. I am not the best lesson maker. I'm not the best teacher. I tell my students stories, and they will run through walls for me. That is the truth. You can get people to do what you want by telling stories. You can also gain personal understanding that is truly extraordinary. When you start to think about stories in your life, everything can change. The truth of our lives is this. You live your life probably thinking about everyone but yourself. You probably think about your children and your spouse and your parents and your colleagues and your neighbors and your business more than you ever think about yourself. We do not take time to sit down and think, who am I, why am I, where am I, and what am I? The best storytellers in the world are slightly self-centered in a good way, meaning we're, we allow ourselves the time to actually think about ourselves. A few years ago, I was playing golf with my friend Steve. It was 100 degrees, and I had left my water in the car. We're on the sixth hole. I am trudging up a hill, and he says, hey, I have an extra Gatorade. Do you want it? And I said, no. Crazy. I'm dying, and I refuse the Gatorade. Eventually, as a storyteller, I asked myself, why did you do that? And then I realized. As a child, I grew up hungry. I never had enough food. And when you're hungry as a child, what you learn to do is never accept a food offering from someone else because you know you can never reciprocate that offer. Now, I am a 48-year-old man on that day with plenty of food in his refrigerator and a means to return everything that Steve gives to me, and yet I say no. It's in my DNA. I am still a little boy worried about food, and I would have never known it had I not been a storyteller who allowed himself to sit in his car for a minute and say, why did you do that thing that you did? When we start to actually give ourselves permission to think about ourselves and not everyone else in the world, we can find understanding that can change our lives. And the last one is weird for me. It's healing, which I think sounds a little earthy crunchy, and that is not me. I don't do yoga because there's no like scoring or trophies at the end of the class. I don't eat granola because cheeseburgers and ice cream still exist, so why would I eat granola? I am not a spiritual person. But what I know is that when you learn to tell stories about your life, when you start to find those stories and tell them, your life can change in a deep and meaningful way. I was homeless for a period in my life. And when I was homeless, what I knew in my heart was I was homeless because the people who could have helped me chose not to help me. And that was a hard thing for me to live with for a very long time. It infected my life like tentacles, back and forward. And then one day I decided to tell the story of my homelessness. And magical things happened. I made that period of homelessness a chapter in my life rather than infecting the whole life. I gave it a beginning and an end. I found actual inspiration in that story. I found moments of meaning. I found gratitude that I had been homeless. I recognized how it had changed my life. It became art that I would stand on a stage and share with people, and people who were homeless, who were afraid to ever tell their friends or family about it, they came to me and talked to me. A student, a 10-year-old girl once came to me and said, I'm living in the car with my mom, can you help us? And she would have never said those words had I not told my students about my homelessness. When we find and tell stories in our lives, we make them chapters, we turn them into art, we examine them and we think about them, we can change the way we look at our lives, we can change the way the events of our lives are impacting us. I think it's a little crazy but I promise you that it works. So here's the good news for you. First of all, everyone has a story to tell. Everyone actually has many, many stories to tell. You do. I know there's three of you out there who think, no, I actually don't, but you do. I have worked with thousands of people and dozens of corporations over the years. I have yet to meet someone so sad, so lonely, so pathetic as to not have a story. Every person I work with finds many, many stories to tell. Also, you probably already have a great story. You probably have the story that you tell at most dinner parties. You have the story that your significant other or your brother says, tell that story. You probably already have one in your heart. You might not tell it well yet, and that's okay. The problem with storytelling is most of our audiences are people who love us. So they have infinite patience for us. So we are trained in life to tell bad stories because everyone will put up with us because the people we talk to love us. But it doesn't take much. Everyone can learn to tell a great story. I have taken the worst storytellers, like achingly bad, 
human beings, and I have turned them into people who can stand on stages and wow crowds. It is not magic. It is not inherently within you. It is not a God-given talent. It is simple strategies. It is decision-making. It is thinking about what you're going to say before you say it. It is listening. Those are all easy principles to learn. The best thing is that if you learn to tell stories, it's going to make you entertaining and likable and attractive. Someone once asked my wife, when did you first fall in love with Matt? And I figured she would say, I looked at him, he was amazing, and I wanted to be with him. She said, that has never been the one thing, Matt. She told the person that we had gone out to a restaurant one night when we were teaching together, before we were even together as a couple. And it was our first dinner together. She asks me questions, and I tell stories. That's how I work. She said, that was the night. She said, I learned things about him that you never learn on a first dinner. He tells everything. And she said, I love the way he spoke. That was the night I fell in love with him. I got the best spouse in the whole world through storytelling. I am a fundamentally unlikable person who tells a good story, and it gets me through my life. That is true. But the best news of all is that you're not special. You are not some unicorn who thinks, all of that's true except for me. I meet these supposed unicorns all the time. I take out my bow and arrow and I shoot them. Unicorn meat is delicious. I rip the horn off. None of you are so special as to not be able to do the same thing that I can do on a daily basis. What I do is not special. I am not gifted in any way. I am not incredibly intelligent. I am simply a person who has learned to think about what he's going to say before he says it. I'm a person who has paid attention to stories, and I figured out what is entertaining and what is not. And it did not take much time for me to figure that out. And I'm not that smart. You can do the same. None of you are so special as to not be able to tell stories. I want you to be added to my list. I want you to be alongside the loveless and the Santa Clauses and the, the husbands who tell terrible stories and the priests and the ministers and rabbis, all those people, I want you to be added to my list because I think the world is a better place. I think the world is a much better place when we tell stories, when we share our humanity, when we make people feel better about their humanity by making us feel good about our own. And so this is what I want you to do today. And don't not do it. I want you to tell a story today to the person sitting next to you or some stranger. I want you to tell them something about your life that you have never told anyone before. I want you to tell a lot of stories, and I want you to believe in everything that I said. I want you to leave here knowing that you are the person I am speaking to right now, that I am not speaking to everyone but you. I promise I am speaking specifically to you right now. You can tell stories. You have stories to tell. People need to hear those stories, and telling them will change your life. So don't mess around. Go do it. As soon as we're done here, go tell a story. Thank you.